Yesterday on Ramblings with Rebecca, we talked about the three tiers of power and the fact that not all power comes in punches and brute force. Power that people and groups and nation states exhibit can also be soft power through ideas and putting, you know, what's on the bargaining table, setting the agenda, shaping norms and assumptions of behavior and worldviews. Closely related to those ideas is that of hegemony. I'm Rebecca Farn and this is Ramblings with Rebecca and what on earth is hegemony? Hegemony comes from a Greek term, hegemonia, I'm sure I didn't say that right, um, that refers to leadership and rule. It can be used broadly speaking to just refer to kind of authority, leadership, etc. It's specifically often used though uh, in a political context to talk about relationships between states or other political powers. Um, so coming from Greece, there's a lot of talk about hegemony between the city-states uh, and that kind of thing of those days. Reasons they're related, well, hegemons use the kinds of power. Hegemony can be understood as a combination of force and consent between formal equals. Alright, so it's people or groups or nation states who are like technically in some capacity on the same plane, but they're not actually. Uh, so the US is a hegemon amongst nation states. China is a regional hegemon in Asia. Egypt used to be, now debatable, was an Arab hegemon. There are states that technically in the world order don't have higher powers and that kind of thing, but of course we know, in practical speaking, they do. Uh, hegemony is unique in some ways in that it is not generally used to refer to military occupation or powers. It's moving from direct military control of a place to the other forms of power, the softer forms of power. So a colonizing country and, you know, its colony, like that, that hegemony wouldn't be used to describe that so much, right? It's when technically they're both independent free states, but there's still a very uneven balance of power going on. Uh, so the hegemon's language becomes the lingua franca. Uh, the hegemon's businesses and institutions and cultures and ways of life and you know, ways of seeing the world become integrated and completely ingrained elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, McDonald's and Starbucks, you know, everywhere, English, everywhere. Those kind of things are, you know, signs of Western and U.S. hegemony. This doesn't mean that the power is all one way. Uh, going back to the dialectic that we talked about at the very beginning of you know this whole series. I really think that if you influence something, you're going to be influenced by it as well in, you know, what other s small ways. But it's a very unequal balance, right? So, yes, within the United States, we have cultural influences from all over the place. Um, but the power that we wield over those other cultures tends to be much stronger than the power their culture and their government wields over us. And money, of course, can take a lot of forms and through all of these different kinds of powers. Uh, and the biggest kind of challenge, if you will, in hegemony is that it starts to enter the mindset and you know the basic fundamental assumptions of the weaker party uh, so that the status quo becomes normalized. There's a narrative of why so-and-so is on top and how much that makes sense and they should be in power and the way things are is good. You know, such that the weaker really starts to embrace the unequal power distribution and see it as appropriate and normal and you know, the status quo triumphs. And this becomes much harder to fight against. Um, so in a way, hegemony and the soft powers can actually be much trickier. Uh, because it's pretty obvious when someone's holding a gun to your <laughs> head. It's not as obvious when someone is subtly influencing your ideas and assumptions. And it's harder to name, and it's harder to counter against. Um, it's harder to act again against because it's harder to see. Right? I mean, so, you know, the first step in fighting something is <laughs> knowing what you're fighting. Uh, but it's also harder to counteract because it's so much less concrete to grasp and to utilize. And if someone or some group or some government has a lot of soft power, it's hard to figure out how you get your own of that. So that's the big challenge, uh, is <laughs> for weaker parties and hegemonic relationships to first realize that there's a hegemonic relationship going on and then figure out what tools do we have to counter this if we need. Uh, so counter-hegemonic action 
is something that we'll explore shortly.